When we first lab tested the water drop A1, methylene chloride, a chemical linked to cancer and liver problems, had leached into our filtered water at more than twice the EPA's legal limit. As a result of our video, water drop pulled the product to investigate the issue. And eventually, they released an updated version claiming the leaching had been resolved. We promised we'd do a retest, and recently we did. So let's find out if the water drop A1 reverse osmosis hot and cold water dispenser is finally safe to use. Hey, Sarah here with BOS Water, and hopefully our final water drop A1 video, most importantly, featuring a lab test of the updated version to find out if it still leaches harmful chemicals. Before we get into that, let's quickly recap what happened so far. We had initially planned to review the first version of the water drop A1, which is a countertop RO system with integrated heating and cooling in full, as we usually do, meaning lab testing, speed test, wastewater test, overall usability, and so on. However, when our lab reports came back, they showed elevated levels of methylene chloride, also known as dichloromethane, and xylenes for the filtered water, whereas neither chemical had been found in our raw tap water, which suggested a serious leaching issue. Specifically, methylene chloride had been detected at 11.87 parts per billion. So way more than the strictest health guidelines we could find set at four parts per billion. And also more than twice the EPA's legal limit for public water supplies of five parts per billion. Now, methylene chloride in drinking water has been linked to liver problems, and an increased risk of getting cancer. And in fact, this is why the EPA has started regulating the organic compound. So needless to say, we found these results pretty alarming, which is why we conducted another round of testing just to rule out any potential errors. And the second lab report also listed methylene chloride, though at a slightly lower concentration. And then we found out that Derek from Modern Castle here on YouTube had also done a lab analysis of the water drop A1, and he had also found methylene chloride in his water. So after our video highlighting these concerns went live, water drop decided to withdraw the A1 from all sales channels to conduct their own testing, which they did. They even tested the very same unit we used, which we had returned to them. And essentially the company confirmed the chemical leaching, albeit at a much lower concentration. Well, several months later, Water Drop re-released an updated version of the A1 stating the leaching issue had been resolved. And that's where we are right now. We got our hands on the new and hopefully improved A1. We set it up according to the manual and we conducted our usual lab testing for real life contaminant reduction capabilities abilities and potential leaching, meaning we took an unfiltered and a filtered water sample, sent both to a professional lab for analysis, and compared the concentrations of all the different impurities and contaminants in our tap water before and after filtration. Want to check out the results? Well, here they are. First of all, we didn't find any methylene chloride in our filtered water, and only a very tiny amount of xylenes at 1.32 parts per billion. So similar to what we found in our initial test, which is still not ideal, please don't get me wrong, but when you consider that the strictest xylene health guideline we could find is at 500 ppb, so 378 times higher, we're not really worried. So based on that, it indeed looks like there's no more harmful leaching going on. Well, how about contaminant reduction though? Well, keeping in mind that before and after lab testing isn't an exact science and that we can only test for the contaminants as they occur in our water supply, the new water drop A1 did great. Everything removed to 100% except boron at 50% and small traces of fluoride remaining in our filtered water, but at levels so low the lab couldn't even quantify them, which makes the new water drop A1 at least as effective at reducing fluoride as any of the 20 other RO systems we've tested up to this point. Also 98% TDS reduction is the highest rate we've measured with any RO so far, so this looks really promising. Bottom line, solid performance of the water drop A1 in our lab testing with only very minimal leaching. And yes, we did test for all the chemicals we usually test for, which means we can finally discuss all the other product aspects. And by the way, we've updated all our Google Sheets for the new water drop A1, including lab reports. So as usual, everything is fully transparent. So for example, the sheet you're seeing right now is where we compare 10 different countertop ROs, and it also contains our A1 product link and an exclusive discount code. So don't forget those if you're planning to purchase and want to save a few bucks while supporting our work. I'll link the sheet in the video description and I'll also add our product link and code. Okay, aside from our lab results, what do you need to know about the Water Drop A1? Well, first off, it doesn't have any official NSF certifications for contaminant reduction, unfortunately, but 
at least we have some third-party testing, most of it against NSF standards 42, 53, and 58. Checking the performance data sheets, we find high reduction rates for chlorine and chloramine, TDS, nitrate, fluoride, arsenic-5, chromium-6, lead, chloroform, several antibiotics, PFOA, PFOS, and a few other substances. So pretty solid. Also for filtration, our filtered water tasted and smelled 100% clean. Looking at the different filter stages, the water drop A1 basically applies the go-to filtration process for reverse osmosis systems, with one exception. It uses UV post-treatment to eradicate germs, but we can't really test for this, so we're not sure about the benefit, but it certainly won't hurt. And looking at the different filter stages is also interesting for another reason. There's a new carbon post filter stage in the updated A1. So now after diffusing through the RO membrane, the water has to pass through an activated carbon block, which we're assuming is one of the changes water drop has made to fix the chemical leaching, which back in our first video, we had already speculated might originate from the RO membrane, which are often chemically treated during production to enhance performance. Anyway, how about usability? Well, for one, the water drop A1 feels very sturdy and high quality, and it's very easy to assemble and prime with clear written instructions and helpful videos. Here's a quick rundown of the process. Remove the cover to the filter housing and install the filters with a simple twist motion. Remove the feed water tank and wash with soap and water. Fill the tank with tap water and return to the system. Place a container under the unit, then plug in the unit and when it powers on, you'll toggle to the screen to flush. Once the system flushes the entire tank's worth of water, dump that water and refill again two more times for a total of three flushing cycles. After that, it's ready to use. Once set up, using the A1 is straightforward also thanks to the large and responsive touch screen. Basically, you tap the drop icon, place a container on the drip tray to activate the system. You then select your desired water volume, so 4, 8, 16, or 20 ounces, or max. Next, select your desired water temperature. There's cold, ambient, and four different temperatures from warm to hot. You tap the drop icon again to dispense, and if you want to pause the dispense, simply hit any of the keys. So this is what makes the A1 stand out from most other countertop ROs, the fact that it can provide purified RO water at different temperatures. According to WaterDrop, the cold water should range between 41 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then there's ambient 113, 140, 185, and up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, we checked this, and while the system usually displayed 41 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit, the lowest our thermometers actually read was 44 degrees Fahrenheit, which still felt surprisingly crisp and refreshing. And our hottest water reached up to around 195 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty hot, but not 203 degrees Fahrenheit as displayed. Now, 195 degrees Fahrenheit should be enough for most teas, but it's at the lower end of the scale for brewing coffee. Now that said, output temperatures can vary depending on the temperature of the feed water. And one more thing to note is that dispensing cold water is limited to up to 33 ounces at a time before the system needs a few minutes to cool more water. However, the longer you wait before dispensing, the colder the water becomes. The temperature you pick will also affect dispensing speed. We measured about 27 seconds to dispense 1.5 cups of ambient water, so pretty fast for a countertop RO, but still some patience required. And cold water takes a little longer, and dispensing 12 ounces at the highest temperature setting takes about a minute. Any other features worth mentioning? Well, yes, lots actually. One extra that we really like is the TDS monitor, allowing you to track filtration effectiveness. Based on our testing, the tracking is pretty accurate. You also get an optional child safety lock on the hot water and several smaller extras like the dispensing light for when it's dark, plus the light changes colors based on the chosen water temperature. There's also a water shortage and a water change reminder, an option to flush the system, a vacation mode, and even a boiling point correction in case you live at higher altitudes. And finally, night mode. In this mode, the system runs more quietly while pouring and stays completely silent in between since both cooling compressor and all pumps, which normally kick in periodically, are disabled. And that eliminates the regular mode's background noise, which can honestly get pretty annoying. That said, if you don't need the cooling feature, you can also manually turn it off in regular mode to reduce noise and save energy. Now, what we don't like is that night mode requires you to program a start and end time, which might not be ideal for users with inconsistent sleep or wake schedules. In that case, it would have been helpful if WaterDrop had included a simple on-off toggle. Another con, the WaterDrop A1 is tall, deep, and extremely heavy. So not only does it take up a decent amount of counter space, it can also be awkward to empty and refill the removable 1.1 gallon feed tank, depending on where you place the unit. 
On the upside, and the last reusability, filter replacements, which are very easy. The modular cartridges simply twist in and out, plus a filter life indicator tells you when to replace. You can even use a QR code on the screen to order new filters on the WaterDrop website. Okay, the last test we conduct on every RO system is wastewater. Here, the WaterDrop A1 did great too, wasting no more than 0.36 gallons per one gallon purified. Out of the 10 countertop ROs we've tested, only two did better. Finally, before I get to cost, Amazon customer feedback. So it looks like there's been a reset with the updated A1 version. Earlier reviews were a bit mixed, partly because of the transition between the old and new model when replacement filters weren't always available. Other common complaints included malfunctioning units, leaking and unresponsive displays. Now we're not sure if these issues have been addressed with the update, but at least we didn't run into any problems. The only issue that seems to persist is the hot water not being hot enough for some use cases. Okay, cost. Regular price is $649, which is on the higher side, but the system is usually on discount. Plus WaterDrop agreed to provide us with an exclusive code that you can use to get an additional 3% off on top of most sales. So in the end, you're probably looking at around $500, maybe $550, which seems okay for what you get. And everything is covered by a one year warranty. Replacement filters come in at around $130 yearly, totally reasonable. And you can save another 5% with a filter subscription. And that's it. So here's a quick summary of how the updated water drop A1 performed in our testing. Aside from a tiny amount of xylenes detected well below health guidelines, it looks like the chemical leaching has indeed been resolved. Plus, the system achieved great results for contaminant reduction. There are no NSF certifications for contaminant reduction, but at least some third-party testing is available. The filtered water tasted and smelled great. The system feels high quality and is easy to set up, use, and maintain. In our test, cold water was almost as cold as advertised and pretty crisp and refreshing. The hot was pretty hot, though not quite 203 degrees Fahrenheit, which is definitely something to keep in mind depending on your intended use. The system is rather large and heavy, which can make it difficult to handle. There are lots of extras like TDS monitoring for filtration effectiveness. Night mode is particularly useful because periodically the water drop A1 is noticeably noisy in regular mode. The system wastes very little water, Old Amazon customer feedback was mixed, but it's possible that many of those earlier complaints have been addressed with a new version. And overall, costs seem reasonable if you buy during a discount. So don't forget to use our exclusive code. All right, remember to check our Google Sheet for our full and updated analysis of the WaterDrop A1, along with nine other countertop ROs. You'll find our product link and discount code both in the sheet and in the video description in case you wanna purchase. And as always, Please drop any questions or filter requests in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.